Well, here we go. We've got Ron Paul about to address his supporters. Ron Paul, like Rick Santorum, not in Florida tonight, focusing on the long game, saying that he's in this for the caucus states ahead, that he's in this to amass delegates. He's the guy who's been saying from the beginning he will be in it through the convention. Ron Paul finishing fourth tonight in Florida. He had zero Florida campaign staff. Zero. He has moved on, but he's dressing, addressing his supporters uh, tonight. Let's listen. Ron Paul. If enthusiasm wins election, we win hands down. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is great. This is very, very nice, and thank you very much for coming out. You know, just, just, just a little while ago, I called uh, Governor uh, Romney and congratulated him, and we had a friend of... No, we, we had... We had a friendly conversation, and uh, I, I, I honestly congratulate him. He ran a good campaign, but I also said I would see him soon in the caucus states. You know, we've, we've been having a fantastic trip, and uh, not too long ago, a few days ago, we were up in Maine. Fantastic reception up in Maine. Today we had uh, three visits in Colorado, and they were fantastic. Uh, we've, we visited with, and we probably had attendance well over 5,000 today in Colorado. And it looks like we have a few hundred here tonight, to say the least. A thousand people. <laughs> I, uh, you know, a few months ago, there were, well, how many candidates were? There were nine. We're down to four. But tonight, tonight I saw a statistic. We're in third place when it comes to delegates, and that's what really counts. And we've only gotten started. Now the counting really occurs. And we will spend our time in the caucus states because uh, if, if you have an irate tireless minority, you do very well in the caucus state. <laughs> but there's something else that the caucus states lends itself to because if you have an energized group of people that are working in a campaign and actually believe in something, it's better to work in the caucus states. This is what's been so fantastic with the campaign. I've been uh, doing a little bit of campaigning for Liberty for a long time. But l let, me, let me tell you, something big is happening in this country, and it's all very favorable. There's a mess up in Washington, and they've created a mess. They've given us a lousy foreign policy. They've given us a lousy budget, and they've given us a lousy recession. But where the wonderful thing is happening is in the grassroots. People are beginning to realize that the problem is too much government. We need more personal liberty. And this is where we're winning the hearts and minds of the people, and the numbers are growing. I'll tell you what, there's many brush fires of freedom being lit across this country today. We don't even know where they are. There are so many. But it is being translated into great enthusiasm and change, the change that we need. We don't need to have more government. We need to get rid of some of the ordinary process of the government. We, uh, for instance, don't you think it's about time we had a new monetary policy? Yeah. And the Fed, right, and it.
then would we have to invent something new? All we'd have to do is read the Constitution. They tell us exactly what we're supposed to have. Now, what about a foreign policy? We need a foreign policy, but do we have to invent it? No, all we have to do is read the Constitution. We need a strong national defense. We don't need to be the policemen of the world. And very, very simply, we should reject and not get engaged in any more wars that aren't declared properly and supported by the people. You know, I've, I've gotten some advice on the internet every once in a while, and the advice is, Ron, if you would just change your foreign policy, you would get a few supporters. <laughs> If they only knew that the support for the freedom movement comes with a sound economic and a sound foreign policy that makes sense. Very simply, very simply it means bringing our troops home and stopping all these undeclared unwinnable wars. What would, this, what would this do for our economy? I'd like to see all the troops spending their money here at home and not going over there. But in the last 10 years, fighting these unwinnable, undeclared wars, we have spent over $4 trillion more into debt for this. So there's a cost of life and limb, but there's an economic cost as well, and the American people are tired of it, and they're ready because they know this country is bankrupt. All great nations go down because they overextend themselves overseas. So I would say it's time for us to wake up. Don't wait for an economic crisis to hit when we have to come wimping home. We ought to just wise up, spend our money wisely, defend this country, and don't pretend that we can tell other people how to live. The greatest, the greatest danger when we accept the notion that the government's supposed to take care of us from cradle to grave and we're supposed to be the policemen of the world is that it ultimately is done at the expense of personal liberty. The purpose of all government should be the protection of individual liberty for each and every one of us. We need to reverse the trend on the attack on our civil liberties. We need to repeal the Patriot Act. We need to repeal... We need to repeal the provision that the president has the authority to assassinate American citizens without trial. We need to repeal the provision that says the president can use the military to arrest any American citizen and deny them a trial. Very simply, the answer is send only people to Washington, send only people to the White House that know and understand and read the Constitution and enforce the Constitution. And then there would be, then we would have the full understanding how you have a peaceful, thriving nation is you enforce the concept of liberty. Enforce the liberty for each and every one of us equally. This brings people together because people will use their liberty in different manners, but we don't have to fight over how they use their liberty as long as they assume responsibility for themselves and the consequences of all their actions. It also, it also very simply suggests the fact that if we have a right to our life and our liberty, we should have a right to keep the fruits of our labor as well. So we don't have to reinvent something. We can improve on our past, but we had a great past. We had a great constitution. We had a great middle class, the richest and the biggest middle class ever. And we've undermined it with excessive spending, excessive taxation, a monetary system that is flawed and a foreign policy is flawed. So all we have to do is return to our roots. And in a short time, we could have our peace and our prosperity and our reliance on ourselves with our personal liberty. Not only 
boy, has this been a great day for the campaign for liberty and, the, and this process, but it's been a great week for the campaign. And believe me, it's been a great past four years because five, six, or seven years ago, they really didn't know exactly what was happening. But with the crisis that hit, both the economic crisis that we had four years ago, the realization of the significance of our Federal Reserve System, as well as our flawed foreign policy, the people know about it. They're awakening to this. They're listening to this message. It's up to us to do something about it. The message is loud and clear. The enthusiasm is here, but it has to be translated into proper political action. That means attending the caucuses and send a powerful message to this country that we want our freedoms back. We don't want more government. Thank you very much. Texas Congressman Dr. Ron Paul addressing supporters tonight after his fourth place finish in Florida. Congressman Paul is not in Florida. He maintained no Florida staff during this campaign, Florida being sort of a winner-take-all state in terms of its delegates. The campaign decided relatively early on they did not expect to win in Florida, and so they would not, in their terms, waste resources there. Congressman Paul is speaking in Henderson, Nevada tonight, speaking in front of young supporters, which of course is both a hallmark of his campaign and one of the most important things about his campaign, the way he motivates young Republicans and young people who might not otherwise be Republicans if they didn't support Ron Paul uh, to get involved in politics. When we return... Tonight I saw a statistic we're in third place when it comes to delegates, and that's what really counts. started. Now the counting really occurred. <laughs> no, and we will spend our time in the caucus states because uh, if, if you have an irate Tyler's minority, you do very well in the caucus state. <laughs> are concerned uh, 1,144 uh, delegates are needed in order to secure the Republican presidential nomination. Uh, right now, it's very, very early in the process. As of tonight, with all 50 delegates from Florida going to uh, Mitt Romney, he's got 84. Newt Gingrich has 27. Ron Paul has 10. Rick Santorum has 8. Uh, let's go over to John King. Uh, John, uh, a very decisive win tonight uh, by uh, Mitt Romney, but i got to tell you, as far as the all of delegate count is concerned very early in the game so maybe Rick Santorum Ron Paul and Newt Gingrich are right when they say they've only just begun to fight